just talking about what's going on in this market. A lot of people still unemployed. All in number, the percentage of all everyone who is either unemployed or working part time and doesn't want to be or has a job they don't want, we're at 16 percent. That means 16 percent of the country is doing something they don't want to be doing. And your resume gets old and stale after a while. Um, a lot of people, their jobs are pretty much gone. So what do you do? Dr. Tracy Willen DeGenti, director of the Apollo Research Institute, is with us right now. A lot of people have this problem these days, don't they? Stale resumes. Yes, they do. In fact, like bread, they'll keep getting staler. The resume is your calling card. It's your billboard. It's your pop-up ad. Why should I click on you? It's very important. Let me ask you. You said click on you. What, what, what's different from like when I applied for my first job, it was a one piece of paper. I had to have my objective at the top. Are we still doing it that way? Oh, well, companies have technology now, so they have search words, they're looking for key skills, they're looking for your education. Remember you used to put it on the back? Yeah. Put it on the front now, it's very important. Interesting, since college is so expensive and so many people are actually thinking about not even going, you're saying that it's still very important. Education and jobs are related, as you know, from the unemployment employment numbers. Absolutely, you're right about that. Okay, so... Refresh your resume. How? Does that mean put it online? I would actually recommend that you go to a wor resume workshop and have a professional. If you have a seven-page resume, it's time to get it down yeah. to two pages. Top page is the most important. Get all the current experience and skills right up there on front. The resume gets you in. It gets you the interview. It doesn't get you the job, but it is the key calling card. It's a good point. So you're saying go to a professional these days. I think there are resume workshops. They're very cheap. You can go to adult ed. You can work with consultants. It's good to have a professional critique it who's more current with companies and what they're looking for. I would probably need that. I'm not even sure I would know what to do these days because I'm sure it's different. You know, what about like LinkedIn and things like that? Is that all part of the process? Oh, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool. In fact, we view it as a key tool for job hunting. Your profile, the groups, your network, first tier, second tier, these are all new ways of networking and finding jobs and people to connect to. You say uh, set up informational meetings. What does that mean? Informational meeting. Two people lead you to two people to lead you to two more people. Learn about what jobs are, are out there. There's new jobs you've probably never even heard of and you're going to hear from them from people. So network is what you're saying. Go back to school is an interesting one because again student debt is on the rise. Many will argue it's so high because kids didn't want to graduate and actually go look for work. The number of jobs in the future will increasingly require BA, MBA, and even PhDs. The world is getting very complex. There will always be that segment of service jobs that are available, but the pie is getting smaller. So my advice to people is continue your education. Is that include certificates and things like that? Absolutely. You have to figure out what is your, you know, you Inc., your yeah. business. Where do I want Tracy to go? You know, how do I get there? Okay, and I guess that all falls into networking, right? I go to school for a certificate in a field I'm interested in. That could be an opportunity to find a job, too. Absolutely. 80% of the jobs are found uh, through networking. And you can go back to your alumni network, your career services, your business networks, your friend networks. There's a lot of ways that you can network and find out. You know, it's funny. I I'm thinking about it. As you're saying, I went back for my master's in secondary ed at one point because I thought I wanted to teach high school. And while I was in a graduate class, I hooked up with another teacher and uh, I got a job at her school because of her. Fantastic. Yeah. And a lot of people, students forget, your professors, many of them are either industry or know somebody in industry. It's a great place to network. Are you seeing the job market changing at all or is it just getting harder? Well, I was just listening to the economists. Yeah. So the first tier, talking to recruiters, is the sales force is usually the first to get hired on. So we are hearing from recruiters that the sales team is, is moving. The second tier, right, is marketing. Just think about it. You, you know, you have a yeah. product, you sell, then you market it. And so that's Different industries. So I live in Silicon Valley, and we were just talking about that on your last segment. Uh -huh. Silicon Valley has a shortage, right? So there's different segments have needs that need to be fulfilled. Um, before I let you go, then, where, what are the, like, the three top areas where people are looking for work these days? Is it tech? Tech, healthcare. Uh, education is an employer in certain segments, certain not, but tech and IT are the two key ones that I would focus on for the future. And healthcare, of course. Tracy, this is all good stuff. You can check out the website, apolloresearchinstitute.org.